It's got Ricky. So Ricky is the person that's helping everybody now. Oh, yes, he is. And there's a 19-year difference. He's 19 years younger than me. He's 45. How long have you known him? Eight, eight months. Eight months? Yeah. He's a, he's a darling. I waited, ten, I waited 10 years to find something. I found him. I found him. But um, on family matters, if I might slightly digress, my brother-in-law is gay. He lives in his, with his partner in Ipo in Malaysia. Oh. They've been together for 12, 12 years. Now, I have a brother who lives as a woman. She is, she is 74. She has been married, had two children. Marriage is still intact, but they do not live together. And her and husband, uh, wife drives trains from St. Pancras of all things. And his granddad, once, later on this year, it will be three times over. Because his daughter, one of his daughters expected a second child, and the other daughters are expecting their first child. But I didn't know until earlier this year that what his daughter that is expecting a second child with her partner had already been married and divorced. I'm told nothing. So when did you know about your brother? 18 months ago. I had gone, you see, I do everything at home, obviously. I went out shopping for family food shopping on Thursday. Um, got the trolley back inside. Roger, Roger, I got some, got some news and I thought, oh my God, the catch dropped dead or something like that. Your brother phoned you up. I said, what? Your brother phoned you up. Oh my God, you know, sort of, oh, get over this. Got his number on the pad by the phone. So I said, yeah, okay. And I, mm, do I contact him? Do I shut my mouth? So I thought, ah, go for it. So I phoned him, phoned her up. And we sat there talking and what had happened to him. And he was estranged. And he said, um, I've got something to tell you. So I said, yes. He said, I'm living as a woman. I thought, I don't believe this. I said, what would choose, brother, being gay and having a partner 12 years? So we talked, and, and I said, I've got something to tell you, haven't I? I told him. Oh, I see. And, uh, and I thought, my God, you know, he's going to drop me like a stone. No, no, no. Three days before Pride, he's got a huge camper van. Well, the first meeting. He lives outside of Lincoln, so I went up to Lincoln on my own. I thought, oh my goodness, what are you getting into? Anyway, looking around, saw this big camper van drawn in. I thought, oh goodness. Anyway, parts it in the station car park, gets out. Ruffles herself, seven inch heels on, I promise it's true, strolls up to me, and after 18 years, I couldn't believe it, and my heart sank. I was spending a lovely time, lovely time together, and uh, I said, um, when are you sort of next? Uh, that's in the London area, if you ever come down. Oh, he said, look, it's, it'll be Christmas. I'll be down with the Rosa, that's his wife, and the girls, um, till the 28th. I said, um, I can't put you up, you realise that. I said, I'll sleep in my van. So I said, you're my guest. 
for four days. Come on. I said, we'll go have a nice time. So he came down. And uh, I don't, Madam, uh, as I will now call her, I don't like your brother. I liked him as a man, so I said, get used to it, dear. And, um, you know, uh, in the meantime, we got on, and had a walk around West, the West End, took her down Soho, walked, out, walked down Old Compton Street hand in hand. It was terrific. And, uh, came to Pride, stayed with us, stayed in his van for four days, and my brother-in-law was at home too. And it was the three of us, oh my goodness. I wouldn't say we had a whale of a time, but we spent time together, we've got some photographs on the internet, uh, and uh, yeah, we're... Uh, had a meal in first out in um, St Giles High Street, and um, we're standing outside there. I said, I promised to take you to Legs, which is a training club in Leighton. So Colin said, oh, I want to have a look at some books down here. He said, um, I'm going to uh, have a look around. He said, no, I'm going to get home. He said, I'm going out with uh, some of my friends from the OY club. So I said, yeah, OK. I'll see you soon. Take care. And my, my sister looked at the three of us and she said, I don't believe this. Three queers at Pride. I just bloody well died. So we got home, Ernestine and I, and uh, I said, I'll take you to Legs tonight. She was knackered. She, felt, she uh, undressed in her ca caravan and said, so I'm going to have a little lie down. So I'm looking at the clock. It's quarter to eight, quarter to nine, quarter to ten, quarter to twelve. I thought, something, I'm going to bed. So I went to bed. She, she got undressed. She lay down on her, on her bed in the van. And she slept for four and a half hours and woke up at half past twelve. So I said, you know what you're going to do this year, don't you? I said, you are going to legs. I said, and Ricky and I will take you. Oh, I can go. I said, look, if you want to go up market, I said, I'll take you to Madame Jojo's. But I said, I warn you, Pride Saturday is you know, heaving, darling, heaving. So I said, but it's up to you if you want to go. I said, we'll sort of speak about it throughout the year and see what happens. Yeah. Ricky came down, Ricky came down for New Year. That was lovely. Oh. I know it sounds stupid, but it took me 10 years to find him. And I don't want to let him go. But uh, people are accepting. They have to. It was funny. My next door neighbour but one, Martin, I came up on the little bus up to Chingford. And uh, he said, that, that small guy with glasses, is that your brother? So I said, no. I said, that's Ricky. That's the boyfriend. I said, remember the tall person? There's a woman. I said, that's my brother. I don't believe this. So I said, you do. I said, next time the pair of them come down, I'll knock on your front door and say, boyfriend? Just like that. Oh, I know Colin. Colin's all right. So I said, yeah, Colin's all right. He's my right arm. <laughs> but uh, I digress too much. I digress too much. Living in the East End, though, um, as far as the police matter is concerned, there was a lot of concern shown about homophobic attitudes by certain members of the public in the Shoreditch area. Now, Shoreditch of, of late, excuse me, Shoreditch of late has come, become quite a not, well, it's a reasonable area. There's two pubs, Joiners and the Georgian Dragon. Georgian Dragon's quite nice because the 
DJ there. She plays at the gay nights in um, Walthamstow. Jeannie D, which is quite good actually. And the joiners, not too bad. Not a favourite, but not too bad. There are certain places I don't like, so, well, like everybody else. Certain places you don't like or you do like. Oh, not really, not yet. They haven't, they haven't happened yet. Anything else would you like to tell us? Okay. I, love, I, love, I must admit, I love gay pride. I love pride. If it wasn't for pride and um, oh, there's a telephone hotline I used years ago. Um, London Friend. They're bloody marvellous. If it wasn't for London Friend, I wouldn't have been invited to go to one of their Saturday afternoon things. I wouldn't have seen that poster. Gay Pride volunteers. I thought, get there. But to me, it is a pilgrimage. It started um, when I first booked on, well, booked on online. Come to this point, booked on, given a T-shirt, shown where I was going to be. And uh, got to a bit hit. I saw the rainbow flow for the first time. I absolutely burst into tears. I knew I was home. That was me. That was where I should be. And since then, funny as it may seem, I've cleared out a wardrobe. I've got a ton over the last 10 years of steward T-shirts. I've gone from a rookie, been to an area manager. I was area manager last year. I made a bit of a, a Bhopal or something. And uh, I'm only a squad leader this year, but it doesn't matter. I'm there, I'm part of it. Then that's it. That's it. And I go to Fisbury Park once a year, where it belonged to MCC, started for me. And two girls, they're not members of our church or any church, they've got partners and gone. I've got two little pieces of paper. One was said East London, and one said North London. North London, I had a lot of baggage in. East London, I was a new boy, so I chose East London. Although the people I don't get on with, I've never looked back. I can't look back. Uh, it's enhanced my Christian faith so much so. So much so. Because some churches only tell you this is the this is the only way this is what you should do and if you do this this or this that's utter nonsense christianity is a choice you make the ch god chooses you to do something well wherever thou goest i will go with thee simple as that you know it's hard it's not a hard choice to make. You don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Follow me, follow me, leave your friends and family. It's true. I haven't left my friends and family. I've got a, I've got a big family, you know. Facebook, social interaction is fantastic. It really is. Um, I can't, you know. Not only friends here, but friends in the North London chapter. Uh, friends I've met to other things. It's good. It's good. Um, people decry it. Um, if you've got something to hide, you're not on Facebook. I've got nothing to hide. I'm a person, believe me, is it's what you see is what you get, no more and no less.